Hey there lads and ladies of the internet. Got Delta Maiden hair ferns? Curious about how to keep these luscious, leafy, magically mysterious maidens happy? Well then, you better stick the f around because today we fit to get into all that sh Hey there, I'm Smith Kingston, houseplant guru extraordinaire. Joining us today, we have Gap Monster, uh, no. Logan Bootler, oh and the phenomenal Pop Dude Dubadup. Alrighty. These two devilish leafy damsels here are known by the common name of Delta Maidenhair Fern and by the scientific name of Adiantum radianum. This type of fern sends out gorgeous arching fronds that reach lengths between 12 and 18 inches and is easily recognized by two features in particular, both of which contribute to its common name. That's right. Some say that the strikingly thin and darkly colored stalks of these lovely leafy ladies strongly resemble the hair of, I guess perhaps, you know, a maiden. And others say that these leafy green lasses were given the name Delta because of the triangular shape of their very unique and eye-catching vibrant green leaves. Now, this fern here is named Nadine, but I haven't gotten around to naming this one yet. So yeah, if you want the honor of naming this lovely leafy lady and a shout out on Instagram, then stay the f tuned because we're gonna get into exactly how you can do that at the end of this video. Video. Also, before we get this low green pal potted into this classy white container and cover all the details as far as keeping these vivacious green vixens fit as fucking fiddles, be sure to subscribe and turn on channel notifications so you don't miss out on any bad graffiti, worst jokes, wacky macrame, or pretty good advice about how to take care of your houseplants. Okie dokie, lads and ladies. Delta maidenhair ferns need a lot of water, okay? Like, a lot. Do not let their roots dry out, but keep the soil in their containers moist at all times. Which, depending on things like container size, fern size, temperature, and humidity, could mean watering your fern as often as every day, but plan on watering it at least once or twice a week. Really though, I guess just keep an eye on the moisture in your fern's container. Listen though, okay? Listen. Some say that hard water can be harmful for these delicate green damsels. So if you're like me and you live somewhere where the water is hard as f then consider taking measures to, I guess, soften your water before using it to moisten the subterranean bits of these emotive green maidens. Don't worry about it. Also, these curious green cuties prefer to be kept at temperatures between 60 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit and in places with lots of humidity. So if you live somewhere dry, you might consider keeping your fern somewhere steamy, like a bathroom or a kitchen, or maybe just setting up a humidifier. Also, try to keep them away from vents, open windows, and other places with lots of airflow. And when it comes to the subterranean aspects, of Delta Maiden hair care, these leafy fronded friends should be kept in a regular all-purpose potting mix, but nothing too quick draining. Also, in small containers, it is worth considering adding some peat moss to even a regular potting mix, because you want a soil that will hold on to lots of moisture. And during the repotting process, try to disturb the roots of these gorgeous green goddesses as little as possible. And don't be surprised to find your fussy fronded friend adorned with a few brown leaves a couple days after the repotting. These ferns don't like to be repotted, okay? But hey, you can't just never repot them though. So listen, if given the proper care, even a very shocked recently repotted salty green sister should eventually forgive you. And as for any discolored leaves, listen. Chop those fuckers off the second they start to lose that gorgeous green sheen, okay? Those leaves are not gonna recover. All they're gonna do is throw shade on the pretty leaves. And also, trimming your devilish leafy damsel during the growing season is likely to trigger some new growth, so that's cool. Okay, lads and ladies, it's time for some pot talk. Oh my gosh. Hey. As far as containers are concerned, I recommend potting these persnickety green pals into glazed ceramic or other non-breathable containers. These will hold on to moisture as opposed to breathable terracotta containers that will slowly wick away the moisture from the soil. And with container size, pretty much any container that doesn't completely dwarf your fern should be just fine. And hey, if you do pot your fern into a container that is a little too big, 
Don't worry about it. If you give it the proper care, it is likely that within three or four months, that fern will send out horizontally growing shooting roots called rhizomes that will send up some sweet little baby ferns to occupy some of the available real estate in your oversized pot. Really though, the most important thing is to always pot these gorgeous green goddesses into a draining container. Okay, don't f around and try to pull sh like potting these or really any other kind of a houseplant into a non-draining container. Just don't fucking do it, even with ferns. Wow. Anyways, as far as sunlight is concerned, give these lovely green lads and lasses as much indirect or filtered sunlight as you can. Direct sunlight is a little too intense for these magically mysterious leafy green maidens and will eventually scorch their delicate triangular leaves. Listen now. If you keep them too far from a window, they will lose a lot of their vibrancy, grow much more slowly, and begin to look all gangly and patchy. I realize that you may have heard elsewhere that these are low light plants, but listen. That's a fucking myth, okay? Give your fronted friends lots of sun, just not, you know, direct sun. When it comes to propagation, these lovely leafy lasses are pretty easily propagated through root division, but if you choose to take this path, try to only chop up larger ferns and do so in springtime or early summer so that your fussy fronded friend has several months of growing season left to recuperate and grow new fronds and a healthy root division before their growth slows down in the fall. And as much as they dislike being repotted, they like having their root systems hacked up even less. So be ready to trim off some faded brown fronds a week or two after you mutilate them. Right, yeah, lovingly. Delta maidenhair ferns do not need to be fertilized, okay? They will do just fine without it. But if you want to give your salty green sisters a little bit of an extra push, you can feed them, but make sure that the solution is well diluted, low in nitrogen, and that you only administer it during the warmer months of the year. And when it comes to toxicity, listen, don't eat this plant, okay? Don't fucking do it. Not because it's like toxic or anything. It's actually considered to be safe for homes with small children and pets. Just because, you know, how fucking weird is that? I don't know. I mean, they may have some nutritional value, but I still wouldn't do it. Shh. When it comes to diseases, most can be avoided if you keep your gorgeous green goddesses in the right light, soil, and humidity, and water it correctly. It is possible for these vivacious green vixens to be infected with root rot, but that can really only happen if you're the kind of a stupid ass dumb shit <laughs> who f**ks around by potting houseplants into non-draining containers. <laughs> Where pests are concerned, infestations are rare but can happen occasionally. For delta maidenhair ferns, the culprits are generally mealybugs and scale, and while alcohol dish soap solutions work great on both those multi-legged motherfuckers when it comes to infested succulents, that is not something to which I would recommend subjecting the delicate and highly moisture sensitive leaves of any kind of a fern. That's right, if you find yourself in a melee with mealybugs or a scuffle with scales, then you may need need to bring out the chemicals in order to save your delicate and distressed damsel. Good options include Foley Matte, Pest Oil, and Confidor, but there are lots of other options out there too. Whichever chemical you choose though, I recommend diluting the solution to half strength and treating your foxy fronded friends outdoors or at least in a well-ventilated area. No matter the infestation though, the fight will be much more easily won if you recognize the threat and treat it early. So check your fern for diseases and bugs every time you water it and also water it correctly. Delta maidenhair ferns that are allowed to dry out are much more prone to pests and diseases. And hey, maybe you fucked up real bad and gave your magical mysterious maiden way too much sun. Or its roots dried out. Or you left it outside on a cold night. Or kept it in a non-draining container. Listen, if for one reason or another a tragedy befalls your fuzzy fronted friend and you end up with one or two or I don't know maybe a hundred percent dried brown leaves, it's gonna be okay. Probably. Keeping houseplants is a learning experience and if you recognize your mistakes early and correct them quickly enough, 
these ferns can be rescued from pretty dire situations. The internet is full of stories about people bringing these mysterious green maidens back from within an inch of death. And I'm pretty sure that none of them had to sacrifice a unicorn to do so. So yeah, try to recognize what went wrong, correct whatever it was that got fucked up, give that salty struggling sister a haircut, and maybe given some time, your struggling salty green sister will forgive you. Amen. Like I said before, this lovely luscious leafy lady here is named Nadine. But as for naming this salty sister, I'm gonna leave that up to you. So yeah, if you wanna name this fern, then leave us a suggestion in the comments, and if the name fits, we'll make it official and give you a shout out on Instagram. Yeah, that's a great idea. Thanks, Gab Monster. Hey, listen, do you like bad graffiti, worse jokes? wacky macrame and pretty good advice about taking care of your house plants well then f***ing subscribe thanks pop dude do it up that's right click that notification bell too so you never miss a new video